Hello friends. Uh, today will be uh, I'll be teaching you DNA structure and its features. The contents which I'll be going to teach you now is DNA structure, salient features of DNA, central dogma, and packaging of DNA helix. So before moving on, I would like to uh, narrate you a brief history of founding of DNA. DNA as an acidic substance present in nucleus was first identified by Frederick Mischer in 1869. He named it as nuclein. However, due to technical limitation in isolating such a polymer, long polymer intact, the elucidation of structure of DNA remained elusive for a very long period of time. It was only in 1953 that James Watson and Francis Crick, based on the extra diffraction data produced by Morris Wilkins and Rosalind Franklin, proposed a very simple but famous double helix model for the structure of DNA. One of the hallmarks of their proposition was base pairing between the two strands of polynucleotide chains. However, this proposition was also based on observation of Erwin Scherdeff that for a double-stranded DNA, the ratios between adenine and thymine and guanine and cytosine are constant and equals 1. Now coming to the structure of DNA. DNA, its full form is deoxyribonucleic acid, is a long polymer of deoxyribonucleotides. The length of DNA is usually defined as the number of nucleotides, which means the more the number of nucleotides, the longer is the length of DNA. Each nucleotide in the chain of DNA has three components, a nitrogenous base, a pentose sugar, and a phosphate group. Pentose sugar is ribose in case of RNA and it is deoxyribose in case of DNA. There are two types of nitrogenous bases, purines and pyrimidines. Purines are adenine and guanine. And pyrimidine is cytosine, uracil, and thymine. Adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine is present in DNA, whereas uracil is present in RNA instead of thymine. N two nucleotides are linked through three prime to four, pri five prime phosphodiester linkage to form a dinucleotide. In this diagram, you can see that in this strand, which is five prime to three prime, two nucleotide, which means this one and this two. These two nucleotides are linked by a phosphodiester linkage. More nucleotides join to form a polynucleotide chain. A polymer thus formed has at one end a free phosphate moiety at 5' end and which is referred to as 5' end of polynucleotide chain and it has a free hydroxyl group at 3' end. In both the strands you can see that 5' end has a phosphate moiety whereas 3' end has hydroxyl group. The backbone in a polynucleotide chain is formed due to sugar and phosphates. So in this diagram you can see this sugar and phosphate this actually form the backbone and in between are the hydrogen bonds between the two bases. Now uh, before moving on you should know what is the difference between nucleoside and nucleotide. When uh, there is no phosphate group attached to the sugar that is a nitrogenous base is linked to pentose sugar through glycosidic linkage it is form a it forms a nucleoside that is no phosphate group is attached to sugar and nitrogenous base whereas when a phosphate group is attached to sugar and base it is called a nucleotide which means sugar and base without um, this group is called nucleoside whereas sugar and base in presence of phosphate group is called a nucleotide next now coming to salient features of DNA first feature it is made up of two polynucleotide chains where the backbone is constituted by sugar phosphate and the basis project inside uh, as you already studied in the structure of DNA that the two polynucleotide chain forms the DNA double helix this two sugar and phosphate uh, groups form the backbone of the dna and the and the bases the nitrogenous bases forming two hydrogen linked with two hydrogen bonds or three hydrogen bonds project inside second feature the two chains have anti parallel polarity which means if a chain has 5 prime to 3 prime polarity the other polynucleotide chain has 3 prime to 5 prime polarity that is it runs in anti parallel fashion third now coming to third feature, the bases in two strands are paired through hydrogen bonds 
forming base pairs which means adenine forms two hydrogen bonds with thymine as you can see in this diagram this is adenine and this is thymine which is linked with two hydrogen bonds whereas cytosine and guanine is linked with three hydrogen bonds this is in case of dna and in rna uh, just adenine whereas uh, where uh, the single stranded structure so you don't need to worry about this generates approximately uniform distance between the two strands of the helix next the pitch of the helix is 3.4 nanometer a nanometer is 1 billionth of a meter that is 10 to the minus 9 meter this means that the distance in one turn the the number of bases which covers in one turn the distance it covers in one turn of helix is the pitch and that is 3.4 nanometer there are roughly 10 base pairs in each turn means the number of base pairs in in one turn of dna helix is 10 consequently the distance between a base pair and a helix is 0.34 nanometer obviously if one turn has 10 base pair so the distance between two consecutive base pair will be 3.4 3.4 divided by 10 which is 0 0.34 nanometer the plane of one base pair stacks over the other in double helix this in addition to hydrogen bonds confers stability to the helical structure so the two things or the two features which confer stability to the dna double helix is the stacking of base pair and the hydrogen bonds which the two base the which the two bases are connected to central dogma the proposition of a double helix structure for DNA and its simplicity in explaining the genetic implication became revolutionary. Very soon, Francis Crick proposed the central dogma in molecular biology, which states that genetic information flows, flows from DNA to RNA to protein. Uh, this central dogma is nothing but the pathway from which the genetic information flows from DNA to finally proteins, that is, First, DNA replicates to increase its amount, then the DNA strands are transcribed, that is the genetic code is read to form RNA. This RNA is further processed and its genetic code is read and translated to form polypeptide chains to finally form proteins. The process will be discussed later. Now coming to packaging of DNA helix, why do we need to package a DNA helix. C. Taking the distance between two consecutive base pairs as 0.34 nanometer as we just read, if the length of DNA double helix in a typical mammalian cell is calculated, that is by simply multiplying the total number of base pairs with distance between two consecutive base pairs, that is 6.6 .6 into 10 per 9 into 0.34 into 10 per minus 9 per base pair, it comes out to be approximately 2.2 meters. A length that is far greater than the dimension of a typical nucleus which is actually 10 power minus 6 meter so if you understand by the statement it says that the length of a typical helix of a typical strand of DNA is 2.2 meter in a mammalian cell whereas the dimension of a nucleus is just 10 power minus 6 meter you can imagine the vast difference hence to accommodate such long DNA helices there has to be some provision in the cell and this provision which the cell provides is in form of packaging of the helix. So how is it packaged in prokaryotes first we'll study. In prokaryotes such as E. coli though they do not have a defined nucleus the DNA is not scattered throughout the cell. DNA being negatively charged is held with some proteins that have positive charges as you can uh, can. As you can grasp from this statement that the DNA which is negatively charged holds some proteins which has positive charges that is the two opposite charges holds DNA and proteins in a t region termed as nucleate. This is very important The it is the nucleate where the uh, DNA in prokaryotes is packaged. The DNA nucleate is organized in large loops held by proteins. So this is the process how the DNA is packaged in prokaryotes. Whereas in eukaryotes, the method is much more organized and much more complex. There is a set of positively charged basic proteins called histones. Histones are rich in basic amino acid residues, lysins and arginines. This, this, is, uh, this is a common question in your exams. That is, 
the two amino acids which uh, which is found mostly in histones so the answer is lysine and arginine both the amino acid residues carry positive charges in their side chains histones are organized to form a unit of eight molecules called as histone octamer the negatively charged dna is wrapped around the positively charged histone octamer to form a structure called nucleosome a typical nucleosome contains 200 base pairs of dna helix nucleosomes constitute the repeating unit of a structure and nucleus called chromatin thread like stained colored bodies and nucleus the nucleosomes in chromatin are seen as beads on string structure when viewed under electron microscope so in short this says that one histone molecule is actually made up of eight units which is referred to as histone octamer these uh, units are h1 which is the long one h2a h2b h3 h4 each uh, each each h4 has two units so it makes a total of eight hence it is called as histone octamer and it is packaged by linker dna from this diagram you can very well understand that how this particular histone molecules are further condensed and condensed to form finally the mitotic chromosome so the beads on string structure in chromatin is packaged to form chromatin fibers that are further coiled and condensed at metaphase stage of cell division to form chromosomes so this condensation which you can see in this diagram is actually happening in the metaphase stage of uh, cell division of in chromosomes the in cells the packaging of chromatin at higher level requires additional set of proteins that are collectively referred to as non histone chrom chromosomal proteins uh, so you just need to understand the uh, basic difference between euchromatin and heterochromatin euchromatin in a typical nucleus some region of chromatin are loosely packed and is referred to as euchromatin that is this loosely packed region stains light whereas in heterochromatin this is more densely packed and it stains dark next difference is that it is transcriptionally very active whereas heterochromatin is transcriptionally very inactive so uh, from these slides you can understand the difference between packaging of dna helix in prokaryotes and eukaryotes main difference is that packaging the region where dna is packaged is nucleoid whereas in eukaryotes it is called the nucleosome and the, it is more organized and more complex this you can refer to this diagram to have a clear view of this packaging process hope it was clear to you thank you very much